Uh, I just think we need to try to, uh, I'm concerned about giving them a 3% and the other employees in the county are not getting whatever. And I understand, and I understand, Mr. Chairman, what you're saying, but when you look at the 3% pay raise for an hourly employee at a very low rate versus a 2% or 3% for an, uh, an employee at a much higher rate, then it's a it, big difference. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want us to be confused with percentages. No, no, I understand. But, I mean, 60, 000, roughly $60,000 for a 3% raise and 20. And I think that $20,000 uh, we, uh, we can take care of in this budget here and, and uh, still keep within what we're trying to accomplish. And, and I understand what you're saying, Mr. Chairman, but it is my belief, additionally, that we could do a 3 to 5% and still take care of the budget. That's my position. Chairman, would it be safe to say that we would like to do this? We just need to see what the numbers are. A little more, a little more detail. Yeah, and I guess we're going to have to make amendments to the yeah. budget in July anyway. So let us look at that. Let's look at uh, the numbers and, and look at the, the various from one percent to five percent uh, increases for the LA employees uh, and, and see where we remember when we. Okay. You're still going to have to adopt a budget tonight. We will, have to, we will adopt the budget tonight. i got to pay but, bills come the first of no, July. No, no, I understand that. We will adopt the budget tonight, uh, but then the uh, budget amendment in July, because it's going to have to take care of the schools. That's great. We're appropriating uh, what they have submitted or have not submitted, and we go from that. Okay? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. Mr. Black. May, may I make a comment? Go ahead, Mr. Black. Um, I guess the the only thing is is if we're gonna we're gonna talk about cutting the schools three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and it kind of bothers me a little bit that <clears throat> we're here, um, you know, we're telling the schools that they can do what, what they want with the money that we give them, and and, and I get that it is their uh, the freedom to do that, but we're technically the leaders of this county. We were voted to make tough decisions, and I think from the top down to prove, <clears throat> you know, I, I know we haven't had sometimes the best relationship with the media to prove that we're not the uh, kings of Caroline County and that we can um, make tough decisions. Um, I would like to make the motion that we ourselves, because the schools are getting cut 3%, that we take a 3% salary cut for the next fiscal year. Second. All right, you've heard the motion from Mr. Black, seconded by Mr. Seeley, that uh, the board take a 3% uh, cut uh, in next year's budget. Discussion of the motion. Mr. Mr. Thomas. Mr. Black, I, I applaud your, your comments there, but I'm not sure that you're aware of this board has been under, I think, a 5% cut for 13%, the last... 13% cut. 13% cut. cut for the last three years, and, and has not, even when we restored county pay and county employees and school pay, we did not move our pay up again, so... And, and that's why I made... The, that's Mr. Thomas, I understand. That's why I'm making the motion for this fiscal year, so if the, if the county coffers were to come back next year, then we could restore pay. Mr. Taylor, discussion on uh, I don't know how much other supervisors do, but I'm out here every day. And anybody that wants to give 3%, I applaud you. But I don't want to give 3%. And you can quote me. Uh, Motion's on the floor. All right. Uh, uh, that was... Uh, Good, call it, good call game. That's a good call game. for a question, Mr. Chairman. All right. Motion has been. You heard the motion. And the motion has been second. All in favor by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Nay. Uh, Mr. Black, to be honest with you, and I've said this before, the three percent is not going to make one difference to me, because the federal government keeps it at the end of the uh, with my social security, uh, uh, so it doesn't make a yeah. bit, bit of difference to me. M Mr. Akers, I understand, I understand, I understand we that. We voted. I, I, yeah, we yeah. voted. We I voted today. Okay. <coughs> Your roll call? Okay. That's kind of obvious. Mr. Black, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Nay. Mr. Underwood? Nay. Mr. Seeley? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Nay. And I vote nay as well. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve the budget as presented by staff with the understanding there will be budget amendments uh, in July to this budget? Or are there? Mr. Chairman, I also move we approve the budget as presented with those corrections or with those additions that you stated. All right. 
Second. Motion by Mr. Taylor, seconded by Mr. Underwood, that the budget will be approved as presented with the understanding that there will be amendments in July. Does that include monthly appropriations? Is that a monthly appropriation? Well, we have done school. Discussion on that motion? All in favor vote by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. Mr. Black, how do you vote? Nay. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Mr. Underwood? Aye. Mr. Seeley? Nay. Mr. Thomas? Aye. And I vote aye as well. And the motion is carried. Uh, the board will take you a 10-minute You also need to uh, appropriate, Mr. Mr. Chairman, what? Do you need to appropriate the budget as well, not just <coughs> adopt it. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Appropriate as in. Is there a motion to appropriate the budget as presented? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion made by Mr. Underwood, seconded by Mr. Taylor, that no, we appropriate the budget as presented. No, no, no. We'll do that with schools. And, uh, if that's what I we'll think we should doing. do that before we take a break. I think we should finish this. Well, we're doing that. We're finishing it. The motion is and has been second to appropriate the budget as it has been presented. That would be okay. a yearly appropriation. But no. can that be changed with the amendments? Okay. No. All right. Then it, we it, need to discuss the appropriation as far as schools are concerned. All, both budgets have to be appropriated in the same manner. Right. So you so can't. The appropriation. If, if you appropriate the school budget uh, monthly, or that's right. your intent, the county budget <coughs> has to be appropriated in that same manner. Is that that's what right. We want to do? Okay. Then make the motion. Can, can we have some discussion on that? We, let's get the motion on the floor. Then we'll have discussion. Okay, so do we need to withdraw the other motion? Or modify it? Or, or modify it? Yeah, you can okay, well, I am mod modified to include a month, month appropriation. monthly appropriation for the county uh, and school. Mr. Underwood, do you, uh, I think you second it. I motion. second. Yeah, okay. Discussion on the motion. Mrs. Hatcher. Doing a monthly appropriation, since you're appropriating the entire budget, I will not be able to make my debt service payments in July. Why not? Because the bulk of uh, <coughs> probably a third of the entire debt service is due in July of the $5 million. So what do we need to do now to make you able to do that? That's, that's the problem with that's the problem monthly. with the monthly. You can't divide um, by twelve, and the schools can't divide by twelve either. So it becomes um, pretty much you have to prepare everything and bring everything to a board meeting and have it approved at that board meeting. So that when the bills get here, the appropriation matches the bills for that particular month, and then there's no further spending. It it would hamper the operations of both the schools and the county severely. We have. How about if you do it quarterly? I still have the same issue. Hmm? I still have the same issue. A lot of your um, maintenance contracts are on an annual basis. They come due only at a certain time during the year. Your, the bulk of your debt service is July and January. But, I mean, it's like these, we know when they're coming, right? We know that there's a, there's a debt service payment in October. We know that there's one in February, whatever. I won't be able to make it if you haven't appropriated the funds. So that's what I'm saying. Why can't we appropriate the funds for July before July gets here? If you're, if you're going to set a dollar amount, yes, but if you're going to do it as a monthly appropriation, you're appropriating the entire budget monthly, not just certain phases of it. So, so I'm so if I gave you a dollar amount, you can I don't pay know all the bills you, up to a dollar. I don't know that you can do that. What I would add, and, and, and I, I worked in King and Queen years ago, and we appropriated by month, and that's the way it was prepared for that monthly meeting, and, and we didn't have any spending authority, and it was a very small county. And it, I, don't, I think it would hamper the operations of both the government, the utilities fund, and the school fund severely if we tried to get in that... If, if we really wanted to work to some sort of quarterly or monthly, I think we need a year to figure out how we're going to do that so we can start presenting that to you next year prior to July. I think it would complicate matters. I mean, it can be done, but I think it would complicate matters severely in our operations. And I'm not sure it would have the 
the necessary effect on the school budget as to whether you know, how they uh, decide to spend their money. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Give it to Okay. Uh, I understand what we were trying to do, but Mr. Kelly is <laughs> our county administrator. We hired him. If he says that this is not something that's going to work for okay. us, okay. then I, I will accept what he says, and I would withdraw my motion. Okay. You know, my, my concern is is the fact that, you know, this board has been you've been accused of playing in the playing game tonight, and, and if we get into appropriating a monthly basis with schools, you know, that even only amplifies that, that uh, accusation or what have you. And I don't want to get into the point where I'm uh, telling the schools as to how to operate. That's not what our uh, responsibility is. Yes, we want to give them money, or we want to, we're trying to provide them money for teacher and support staff increases. No question, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, but I don't know that doing it on a monthly basis is going to make any difference there. I don't know if it's going to make any difference. So you... Uh, well, you withdraw your motion and, and you withdraw your second. I withdraw my second. All right. Is there a motion to approve the, the budget, uh, to appropriate the funds as presented by staff? I was so moved. On an annual basis. Motion be made, Mr. Taylor. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Get it on the floor. All right. Motion be made, Mr. Taylor. Seconded by Mr. Underwood. Discussion on the motion. Well, I mean, if, if you're not going to appropriate the money, it's, it's, it's no point in approving the budget. I mean, well, so I don't think we can sit here and not appropriate the funds because come July 1, you know, what, what would worry me to death is the fact we do the same thing the federal government threatened to do several, uh, last year and the state government did this year, is the fact they get into a stalemate and, and come close to shutting down. And that's what would happen in Caroline County come Ju July 1. If we don't appropriate the funds, there's no funds to operate. The sheriff takes his deputies and goes home. Fire and rescue take their people and go home. And I understand that. I don't think we can afford to do that in county government. This is where I've always said uh, the rubber meets the road when it comes to where the programs take effect and where we impact the people the most. So, you know, I just don't think we can do it. Further discussion on the motion to appropriate the funds on an annual basis. And let us, if we are wanting to do something different, let us look toward doing that next year, and we start working on that process now. Call for a vote, Mr. Chairman. All right. You've heard the motion. All in favor of appropriating the fund on an annual basis as presented by county staff? Vote aye. All right. Aye. All opposed, nay. Nay. Okay. All right. We don't have a budget, then I guess everybody can go home. Uh, come July 1, you, can you, do should, a you should shut down stuff. Well, you have call. to do a roll call. Well, Mr. Black, how do you vote? Nay. Taylor, how do you vote? Uh, Mr. Underwood, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Seeley, how do you vote? Don't look at me. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I wanted to go back to discussion, but I didn't realize we were going to finish. I vote no. All right, Mr. Thomas, how do you vote? Mr. Chairman, I would love to appropriate all the funds, but it's my intention, and I have not wavered from my intention, to provide specific funding for teacher and support personnel pay rate. All I can do is do that. I can't give $11.3 million in change and not necessarily uh, do that. Right, so, before you vote, Mr. Thomas, if you would allow me. Well, but let us let us stop and think what we're trying, what we're doing here tonight, guys. You know, <laughs> the grandstanding is great, and I understand that completely. It is great to make a big political statement in front of the audience, and especially the ones that want to hear what you've got to say. But come July 1, the people that you're trying to protect, the children, guess what's going to happen come September 1? There's not going to be a school for them to go to. There's not going to be teachers for them to be taught by. Because the government is shut down. Mr. Akers, I will, is, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will change my vote Thank to I because appro not appropriating the money doesn't solve the problem. Absolutely does not. Thank you. It, All right. it, Thank it you. doesn't solve the problem. I understand Thank the two no votes. Thank you. But I will, I will, 
because not appropriating the money, though I don't agree with the budget, shutting down the county doesn't make any sense. Thank you. I understand completely. And so I, know I, will, some I, will, I, will, I will reverse my vote so that vote we can I. at least, I will vote aye Thank on, you, on the motion. Thank you. Mr. Thomas, how do you vote? I'll vote aye. And I vote aye as well. The motion is approved by one. The board will take a 10 minute recess. The next item on the agenda is uh, under new business. Um, item number eight, the first reading of an ordinance amending chapter 92 sewers and chapter 112 water of the Code of Caroline County to establish a new tiered rate schedule for commercial utility customers based on average monthly usage. Separately classify and provide reduced availability fees for facilities owned by the county or by nonprofit organizations. Change the due date for availability payments and provide for a water uh, of late penalties under certain conditions. Oh, it should be a waiver. It's got water there. All right. Mr. Schiebel? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good evening. Uh, good tonight evening. I'm going to review the uh, changes, proposed changes in Chapter 92 for sewers and Chapter 112 for water in the Code of Caroline. I'm going to go through each one individually. Um, and after each one, let the board ask questions so that way it's fresh on your mind. Uh, the first one is the proposed new tiered rate schedule for commercial utility customers based on an average monthly usage. If you remember, in 2008, uh, we went from a standard fee uh, with 6,000 gallons in it, and then we would charge a flat rate for every 1,000 gallons after that. And we changed that to a tiered system. And really, we're seeing that changing uh, in the utility world of being able to charge for those that are using more. And we ended up doing that, and it's worked really good. Um, and, and what it does is the people that don't use as much don't spend as much, and the people that use more pay more. Uh, and what we've done is, during some of these budget discussions uh, of figuring out how can we uh, raise additional revenues, we've looked at uh, other localities and what they charge on the commercial end. And what we've come up with, essentially, is a tiered rate for the commercial customers. Uh, we've got uh, right now, we have a residential rate, and we have a commercial rate. And what I'm proposing is a uh, three commercial rates. Or actually, it will be four. Keep the current one we have plus three additional for a total of four. Commercial rate one would be anybody that used less than 500,000 gallons a month. Commercial rate two would be anybody that uses between 500 and 2 million. Commercial rate three would be anybody between 2 and 4 million per month. And commercial rate four would be anybody that uses greater than 4 million gallons. And again, this was done as those that are using more would pay more. The board at its uh, May 22nd meeting adopted uh, the, current, uh, the proposed rate, which in, would not affect this at all. The, the residential rate would remain the same. This is strictly commercial. Your commercial one rate would not change in this either. Your commercial one rate are the users that use less than half a million. So the proposed increases uh, would provide a very small number of customers. Uh, in that, for your commercial two, we would end up with four customers being impacted. Commercial three, we don't have any between two and four. And we have one customer that's over four million gallons. With these proposed changes, a commercial customer in tier two would go from an increase of about $1,900 in their water to about $2,094. Uh, and their sewer would go from about 6500 to 6927 uh, the average monthly billing for a commercial five, I'm sorry, commercial four tier would go from about 18,000 a month to 20,541 a month. Um, there are no tier three, so that would not change. And basically, what this would do is generate an extra $56,454 of additional revenues uh, for next fiscal year. That's not in the budget already. That is not in the budget currently. Mr. Schiebel, uh Commercial four, the, the user, the one user on the commercial four that uh, uses in excess of four million gallons a month. That's so just a water one. customer only. The other ones are actually water and sewer. And that water customer is Lake Caroline. Is that That's correct? That's correct. Okay. All right, board members, have any questions of Mr. Uh, Schiebel on uh, this change? Essentially, what we've done is when you look at the tiers, the next five or six pages are, are strictly breaking down the tiers. 
And as the tiers get bigger, you end up dropping off your smaller meters because they can't produce that much water. So when you go from a commercial one to a commercial two, you end up dropping off your smaller meter. Same thing when you go to three. And then when you go to four, you can't get four million gallons of water out of the smaller meters, so they completely drop off of the list. That's why they're not shown as we move through those. Um, it also increases, your base fee increases, um, your rates increase, as well as your capital asset fee and um, the administrative fees we left the same. There's no further questions on that. I'll move. Yes, sir. Are there any questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, question. Mr. Shebel, I'm, I'm trying to, <coughs> kind of trying to reverse engineer here, but if I had a commercial three customer that was using, I guess it would be 3.99 million gallons a month. Okay. How much would that person pay? I'm, I'm trying to see where it is. You don't have a, an example of that one. Which size meter, sir? Um, always another factor and, and we actually took the our exact customers today and used their averages we took those three customers that were that fit in the commercial two we averaged their numbers to give you what those average numbers would be for those three customers okay well, of course, let me tell only... you what I'm trying to do okay or at least figure out and then you can tell me because I didn't think the meter mattered but if I'm using 3.9 million gallons per month and then I go up to the next stage and use 4 million gallons per month just that little difference how much is that little difference? See, I'm, I'm trying to equate it to something like, like when you do taxes. If you're at 25%, it's X plus this number. If you're at 28%, it's X plus this number. And right. I'm just trying to see if it's close to... And this would be the, four month, the, the monthly average would be based on a 12-month average. So we would okay. look at your 12 months to, to make sure that we're not changing your rate every month. But right. we, would set it, we, we would set a date, July 1, every year. We would review that and see what your 12-month average was. If you happen to go up the following year, you would be bumped into that next tier, up or down. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to figure out what the difference in pay would be or okay. rate would be if it was $3.9 million per month versus $4 million per month. Okay. So what we would do is if you go to your, your commercial, back up one page. If you go to a commercial three customer and you want to know what, you want to select a four inch meter maybe? Doesn't matter to me because they're all going to be the same. Yeah. Well, but you don't have a three inch meter in commercial four, so you'd have to go with at least a four inch, a commercial. Okay. So if you went with a four inch meter, your base water fee would be 509.36. You would then Take your 948,385 divided by 1,000, multiply that by $1.60. That would give you that rate. We can do that real quick if you want. Would you please? Mm -hmm. If you wouldn't mind being my secretary and write these numbers down. Be happy to. Hmm? All right, so your first number would be 509.36 which is your base fee. Mm -hmm. Your second number would be $1,517.42. 517? Yes, sir. Your next number will be 836, 59. Mr. Sheba, we're probably going to have this again in a public hearing. Yes, sir. So for the second I can give time, you that number. I can email it to you if you want be, me to. That would be perfect. That'd All be right, perfect. and that way you'll see the differences. Um, 
Off the top of my head, I would guess you're probably looking at a 15% increase um, in, in round numbers off the top of my head between a commercial one to commercial two to commercial three to commercial four. 15% each step. Yeah. Okay. That's the kind of number I, I was Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that number and we'll figure that up so you'll know what that exact number is. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. That was all I had. Okay. Other questions of uh, Mr. Schieffel? Are there any changes that you would like to see Mr. Schieffel make to this uh, proposed uh, rate schedule before he sends it back for public hearing? The only thing I would uh, like to know is how, how do we compare to other localities the, within uh, our same... The sewer side, we're going to be in the higher averages, and the water side, we're still going to be a little bit low um, compared to other localities. And we're actually a little low even on our residential side um, for water. Uh, as I would said uh, during the last time we talked about rate increases, you know, next year uh, we would not recommend a sewer increase, but we would recommend a water increase. Okay. okay. The second item uh, is the proposal to separately classify and provide okay. reduced availability before we, fees. Before we leave that. Yes, sir. If you would just a I see Mr. Carter is sitting in the back here, and he's the president of the Lake Caroline uh, Board of Directors. And Ben, I'm just wondering, uh, you heard earlier about Mr. Thomas said he had emails. Do you know any discussion on the Board of Directors about sewer in Lake Caroline? Okay, I didn't know whether it was something that came from the board of directors uh, or not, and I'm just surprised. Okay, you, you have, thank you. you have this email? Ben, if you, can you uh, jot down, if you have something to jot on, uh, your email address for Mr. Thomas, and he'll email you. I'll send them to you. Sure. Actually, I'll send them to Mr. Cully, okay. and he can pass them out. And if you would uh, just give Mr. Cully your email address. If you would give Mr. Cully your email address so that he can... Uh, I'll send you a copy of, of these uh, emails. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Sheba. Go ahead. You're welcome. Uh, the next item is a proposal to separately classify and provi provide reduced availability fees for facilities owned by uh, and or nonprofit organizations. Uh, facilities owned by Caroline County and affiliate departments and agencies or nonprofit organizations frequently request to the Board of Supervisors for a reduction of their availability fee or to completely waive it. Over the past, we've waived over $1.1 million in water and sewer availability fees. Uh, this has contributed to the utilities fund struggling. The Board of Supervisors has been talking about trying to come up with a policy. We will do this. And there's never really been one adopted. Um, so what we've proposed is what we think is reasonable is a reduced rate that we would be able to charge. This code amendment would basically then be your policy by code. Um, so staff believes uh, this approach to create a separate classification to change reduced availability fees for county-owned and nonprofit buildings, these separate classifications would accomplish two objectives. One, it would provide a reduced fee to organizations that exist solely to provide service to the public. And two, to help ensure that utilities funds receive payment for availability fees, providing more uh, affordable fees to these organizations. Nonprofit organizations are designed, uh, are designated or defined as a 501c32 organization. Um, it is common for these types of organizations to receive uh, tax breaks because of their mission to provide public service and not to make a profit. The proposed separate water and sewer availability fees classification is based on the same premise. In the following page, what I have laid out to the board basically is the current water and sewer availability fees and a uh, the current and proposed of what that would be. And basically what we've done is uh, tried to look at how we could structure that to make um, our facilities uh, less expensive, such as the, when we build the new school, uh, to be able to give a somewhat of a reduced rate, I guess, to still that we're trying to benefit uh, the systems that we maintain and, and function, uh, as well as maintain the utility system. So with that, the, uh, the overall impact, the budget, um, we feel would be better because we now have a policy that the funds would then be now be paid according to the code um, and the, the fees would not be waived in the future due to this. So we feel that this would uh, be a positive impact to the budget. 
And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions on this. Have any questions? Mr. Black? Uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Um, I, I think this is actually a, a good idea, Joey. My only concern is if when we set this policy, let's say uh, an organization comes in, a church comes in, now that we reduce the fees, and the church or whatever organization comes in, can we then say that and where they, where they, want, to, they want it completely taken away, can we do that? Or are we going to keep to this fee schedule now that we're given reduced? In other uh, words, it's, it's my understanding. It's my understanding that the the county attorney or someone has determined that the board really cannot waiver the fees for the enterprise fund of the utilities as we have in the past, and we would have to do appropriation out of the general fund to the utility fund, which is an enterprise fund. Now that's, that's my correct. understanding. So we're not going to be able to waiver these fees in the in the future as we have in the past. So. Uh, you know, I, we keep talking about the the utility fund being a drain on county funds, on, on the county, county general fund. And so I think this is a way to help make it, you know, uh, somewhat self-sustaining, uh, is to not weigh with the fees, but put the fees at a point where they're reasonable. And you take a church, for instance, and <coughs> you mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, the chances are the church is probably looking at, you know, water and sewer, what? Twenty-two thousand dollars at the max, or uh, unless it's a All mega right. church. Yeah, I mean most <laughs> churches. You, you're gonna look at uh, if you let's just take Rice <laughs> Chapel and Lady Smith. They're an inch and a half meter at twenty thousand dollars would be that cost right. now. So I mean we can't we can't waiver it in the future, even though we have in the past wavered. You know we wavered uh, uh, connection fees, I believe, uh, water for the fairgrounds, uh, the county fairgrounds, and. Uh, I don't recall what that what that amount was, and I know we have waited for schools on, on every school that we've built that has been wavered. Uh, and we get been, the Ladysmith Rescue that we yeah, the Ladysmith Rescue. We um, get the fire department that wants to hook yeah. up eventually. They yeah. can't come up it's with the funds, so this would allow an induced rate for them to be able to do that in the future. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seely. I guess my question is, we're talking so. If we invoke this policy, what happens is the board would never see the reduced, the reduced amount for connection. It would automatically be done. I can't say that I think anyone is free to bring something in front of the board. I would hope that this would uh, alleviate a lot of that, um, and this would be an automatic set fee that everyone would have to abide by. Um, it would be changed on a, a regular basis as the board sees fit, just like we do any of our other rates. So basically when we change our um, availability fee, we would probably change both of them equally. So if we said we were going to go up $500, we would move all of them up 500 so the tiers would be the now, same. Now what I'm saying, if somebody applies, and they say they're a 501c3, it would automatically be, what's the discount for them then? It would be the, the proposed fees at the lower end. The, the top is our current and would remain for any non-governmental, non-profit, non-non-profit organization would be the top. Any of our government non-profit agencies would be the bottom. Or any agencies that fall underneath of Caroline County. So, but we as a board wouldn't necessarily see those. You would automatically have a set scale. Yeah. So yeah. how do we fix the enterprise fund for the utilities when you're taking in half as much as you should be for each connection? Because I, I don't see that that should have a positive impact, positive impact on your budget. Well, you're not getting anything now. As, as we looked at it, there had been over 1.1 million that had been waived, and most of those things had been related around public or nonprofit connections. And, uh, so w I felt that if we got half of what we were getting and not waving 100% and, and sticking to the half, we were ahead as we moved forward instead of just waving it and not making the, the fund whole. And I think, like on Bowling Green Elementary, they're getting ready to have to, to and we budgeted money to pay that connection fee. Well, if we've lowered that for ourselves, then we're going to keep that in our general fund for that, but if somebody comes to us, an out of, a nonprofit out of uh, uh, the community college, or s some of these other things that could come on the system down the road that are still um, nonprofit 501c3s, not county dollars, they would have a, a availability fee that is that nonprofit fee that they hopefully would be able to afford to pay, and the board would have to stick to that. They, we, we're, we've made our reduction to you to help you as a nonprofit, therefore pay the pay the availability fee, and, and so I think it is a positive net effect moving forward 
as opposed to the million you haven't collected over the previous number of years, and I don't have that right in front of me, but it's a fair amount. So we basically divided by two? Not exactly, really. because of the multipliers, the way the multipliers figure out and trying to, you know, if you were to cut your top number, um, which is really your, your base number, then the multiplier on the right-hand side calculates the rest of those numbers. So we, we tried to come somewhat close to that as it went through there, but there was no way just to say every one. We, we could have done each one 50% and could have said a 5-inch, 3-quarter inch meter would have been 4,000 instead of 6,400. Um, but we didn't feel that for the cost of that size of a meter, that was a, a fair number um, to the utility system. Because when I, when I look at the upper end of this scale, when I look at three, four, and five inches, I mean, those are big connections. They are, absolutely. And, and, and in all honesty, I can't imagine any 501c3 needing a three, four, or five inch connection. I mean, that's big. I mean, I can see the, the three eight, the five eighth, three quarter, one inch, one and a half, maybe two inch. But when you get above two inch, I mean, that's a serious customer. And I don't see doing that for a 501c3, cutting it, cutting it down that much. Just for instance, your, your high school has a 6-inch meter. Your middle school has a 3-inch meter. Um, this facility has a 2-inch meter. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I agreed with the 2. I said when we got to 3. Right, 3 again was the middle school. 6-inch was the high school. The schools aren't really a fair comparison because that's in and out county money. Anyway. County money. And I'm talking about, we're talking about 501c3s is right. what I'm seeing in this. And I'm that, saying it's, it's both, three both inch, county and, and 501c3. But a three inch meter is huge. I mean, you're talking a huge consumption. You're talking one of your category two, three, or four commercial customers that we just went through. Mm, not necessarily. Um, it very well could. I mean, they could, uh, if you look at a three inch meter, it could fall into a one or a two. It could. It could. How, but it, the capacity is for it to be a three or a four. Uh, you can go up. You can get a three inch into a category. You don't have category. to calculate it. No, I was looking at which, uh, <laughs> which tier because you've only got certain three inches in each one. You can get a three in a commercial three. But not a commercial four. But not a commercial four. I mean, we're talking about a serious commercial customer. I mean, I, I agree with the, the first one, two, three, four that you've got there. Right. Because that's where everybody's going to fall. And the again, this was, are this a was a proposal. Situation. Yeah, this was a proposal. We'll be glad to tweak and, and, and make any amendments that the board sees fit. We were trying to come up with a way that uh, would be pleasable to the board and, and hopefully strike a, a conversation for us to come up with uh, a proposal that would work and for us to hopefully stick to. I think when you get to three inch and above, I think we're talking about a serious customer that we need to look at. Why don't, why don't we go to public hearing with what we have here, and then uh, if it doesn't... Uh, I'd like to see the 3-inch and the 4-inch and the 6-inch come off, off of this, because I, I think that's a serious commercial customer. I well, would definitely agree with the 4 and 6-inch. Uh, I mean, 4 and 6, six are, are pretty big meters. 3-inch, I think they could go either way, but the 4-inch, right, I can see that. Take 4-6-inch off. Is that what we're saying? Leave it, I'll leave it all on there? 6 and, is a big meter. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's, it's always better to have more That's what I thought. Hearing. That's what my thought is. Okay. Public hearing. Take it off. The schools, we can say that it's coming out of one and putting the other. But I can tell you, yes, it is in one sense. But in a budget year that we're tight, it's going to be tough to transfer two hundred twenty-six or uh, 400 or almost $900,000 out of the general fund to put in the enterprise fund. It's a lot easier to put $400,000 over into that fund than it is $900,000. And that's the difference we're talking about. We've got to look for the general fund as well. Yeah, but I don't because see taxes. I don't see 900,000 in, well, in a six if you, inch. If you, don't, if you don't go with a six inch, 409,000 for the water and 435 for the uh, sewer, that's almost $900,000. For the six inch, that's 900,000. But you're, we're going we're gonna to have to do something like that, anyways. If the <coughs> enterprise fund is in that bad of shape, whether it's three, four, five, or six. But the point is, if we, if we are able to collect from the C501s, the C503s, rather, that we've talked about, the, the nonprofit groups, or the people that come in and ask us to nickel and dime us, if they're able to pay. I've always been of the belief that 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. 
And that's what we're look and that's what we're basically talking about here. They're not paying anything now. So 100% of that doesn't do us any good at all. But if we can get them to pay half, and in this case, most of these cases, more than half, but if we get them to pay half of, of what the, the total charges are, we've gained. We put money to the enterprise. Well, I, I don't I, think I, I we've guess. given away three or six. I guess, I guess I'm just kind of curious because I, I know very little of this. What, what kind of nonprofit will be using a four or six inch? What, what kind of? I, I, mean, I guess if I, this, what, what the is, state I, fair I, could have come to Carolyn County as a 501 C three organization when they first came to county they decided not to do that because they didn't want to show their their books okay. um, but they could have been a, a large user to the county if they had a, developed in a, a utility area so something like that could have fallen into it um, you know the the one the five eighths to six inches currently what we have in our standard anything above six would come to the board so we again we just worked those numbers figuring underneath of the same um, any of these can be you know modified or, or taken out if the board so chooses okay Thank you. All right, we're going to go to public hearing with as presented, and then we'll work from that point on. Okay? We'll okay. go to public hearing uh, July the 28th. Is that the next? Is that the last meeting in July? Mm -hmm. yeah. 28th? We were discussing changing that. That's meeting. right. Mr. Black wanted to uh, change that. Uh, we will just go with the last meeting in July. Okay. We'll have public hearing on the last meeting in July, whatever they, that, that is. And, I have no problem with the 31st. I mean, that's fine with me. Uh, what are now, is there a third part to this report, or is this is is that it? There's actually four. We've done two okay. of them. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Go ahead. And the third part is the proposed changes to the due date for water and sewer availability fee payments. Um, in 2009, um, the Board of Supervisors heard from a lot of uh, builders when we decided to raise our fees. Uh, our availability fees and, and their big complaint was is with the economy it was really hard for them to ask the bank for a draw for the property they asked for a draw for the availability fees they asked a draw for the building package and, and trying to get all this money up front and the banks were really hesitant to give out these big checks to pay for these things uh, at that time the board chose to allow the builders to 90 days to pay their availability fee um, and that seemed to help um, to a degree uh, and what we've heard now is from the builders is, is well the localities around you don't require us to pay your availability fee until you set the meter um, it's also become uh, a lot of tracking on us each time um, the account is paid after the 90 days is up then I have to basically write a letter to the building official tell them the fees have not been paid he has to revoke the building permit then they have to get that reinstated um, and it has just become a lot of bureaucracy for us and the builders are saying, what difference does it make? You won't set the meter till I get it. I don't have any water. I've got no beneficial use of the system. Um, so to them, uh, we have heard that it would benefit them uh, to be able to pay that fee when the meter's set. Um, and we've looked at other localities around us, uh, and they do, uh, most of them do the same thing, at least the ones that we really compete with. They do not charge that fee until the water meter is set. Um, and that's what the, the number three proposal is. Really, the budget impact to us is, is hopefully this would spur along some more speculative homes that could be built, knowing that they don't have to get a meter until they're getting close to be able to close on that home and get their final inspection just before they close. So hopefully they can string that along as long as they can um, and not have to pay that fee until the very end when they're getting close to selling the home. Questions of Mr. Schiebel on that particular proposal that I guess my question on that is, is so they're building a house and you set the meter. Do they pay when the meter is set then that day, that week? We will not set the meter. Um, typically we tell the builders that we will set the meter within 48 hours um, of them paying the fee. When it went to uh, the 90 days, we still didn't set the meter if they hadn't paid their fee. If they set their, their fee... Set, I'm sorry, if they paid, wanted the meter set 60 days into that 90-day period, we required them to pay that fee before we set the okay. meter. That was still what we were doing, and that's still our intent. So once you pay that fee, within 48 hours, we'll have that meter set. Okay, so the, the, and that's what I'm looking for. They've got to pay the fee before you set the Absolutely. meter. Absolutely. So it's not 60 days after you set the meter they pay? No, sir. This is from okay. the, whenever, they, whenever they ask for that meter to be set, they will basically bring a check to us, and that's when we will be able to set that. Okay. Other questions? All right. Uh, 
The number four item is a proposed extended grace period for payment of penalties for the sewer-only customers. Um, I believe the board is, is 